Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marek Wyslowski. I work for uh, Cesura company as a security researcher, and I would like to speak a little bit about uh, AFL, which is not probably surprised, and how we can do it uh, better. Okay, a few words about me. Uh, security enthusiast, security researcher, Okay, uh, fan of Hacker and the Matrix movie. And also I have a two kids you can even see here. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what AFL is. It's an American Fuzzing Lab. Or if you don't know what American Fuzzing Lab might be, it's a wrong conference. Uh, so this is American Fuzzing Lab. And uh, also a very good tool written by uh, Michal Zalewski, I'll come to uh, many years ago. So um, I just copied the definition. So it's a security oriented fuzzer that employs a novel type of compiled instrumentation and generic algorithms to automate everything, including uh, discovery, interesting taste cases, and strategy to uh, choose another one. Uh, I did small research because I was interested when it was created. I, I'm thinking that it was always here, but it was not. So, uh, as an ancestor of it, it was Bunny the Fuzzer released in 2007. Then the first release of AFL happened in 2013. And uh, since that time, there were 230 releases. Uh, I counted, it, so it's literally two, two, 230 files you can download on Alcome to web page. Uh, so, how it works in general. Um, so, everything starts from a corpus. We need to define corpus, initial test case, however you call it. Then AFL takes those and run through the application. Uh, application creates some feed, um, then it creates some feedback. And based on the feedback, uh, the initial files are chosen for a, uh, for a mutation and for further fuzzing. And after every, every mutation that AFL does, uh, there's kind of feedback if this was interesting, if there was a crash, or we should just skip this test case. This is general overview what uh, what IFL does and how it works. Okay, so how we can uh, speed up the process? Well, there are um, seven of different areas when we can uh, make it better uh, and have uh, uh, and achieve better results. So let's start from the beginning. So at the beginning, there is a corpus file, initial test case that you need to create it and feed, uh, not only IFL, so most of the fuzzers start either from generating itself or from, uh, from a corpus. So uh, most of the guided fuzzer, including clip fuzzer or hong fuzz, all of them relies on initial corpus. Uh, and your fuzzing will be as good uh, as the initial corpus. So what you can do, you can of course start from either zero, so give give nothing. AFL can do that. You can give an empty file. Uh, you need it. At least one file, it's from technical point of view, but it can be just empty and AFL can, can handle that. But the time of fuzzing will be uh, much, much longer. It was already proven by uh, Al Kamtuf. You can see on his web page the test when he started from zero file and after uh, some time the AFL generated appropriate, I think it was PNG file so it works. The second thing you can do, you can just download the stuff from internet. There are a number of resources you can, you can download from, from the internet. If you have PDF files, I don't know, PNG, JPEGs, whatever you want. The important thing is what is the quality of the file that you are downloading, right? You can download thousands of PDFs that will be a simple text and you won't get much coverage of it. Uh, there are, of course, some uh, sample sets. You can go also to Elkamtuf or other G uh, GitHub uh, pages when you can download prepared test set for, for uh, video files or for, um, uh, for graphic files. Or you can try to, um, try to generate using different tools. Try to, when you want to generate, uh, for example, video files, you can use a public available decoders, create different types of the file, different conversion, uh, whatever you want. One of the techniques is used to uh, symbolic execution tool. 
Uh, I already gave a presentation about this. You can you can download it and see it when we use a symbolic execution tool to uh, generate valid graphic files. So we run through it, generate uh, hundreds of uh, of those files, and then uh, feed IFL. You can do, go there and see the comparison, how it works uh, with the zero file and with the with the stuff that uh, we generate. Okay, so we've got our initial uh, initial corpus. It's run through application, and the AFL is running. The next the next thing that AFL is doing is uh, how the AFL choose the input, right? Because not every file will be uh, will be chosen. It needs to decide which file is interesting. The question is what means uh, interesting. So AFL has a classic genetic algorithm inside. You can go through the source code and and see how it works. However, there are other strategies uh, available uh, in the network. I choose two of them. They are quite interesting. One is called AFL Rare Branches. So it's a fork of AFL that uh, promotes the branches that are executed um, the rare. The other one is called AFL. It's use uh, path sensitive fuzzing. Uh, it's quite interesting idea of how they are choosing what to fuzz next, what uh, input should be used next. Uh, the problem is uh, it's just the paper, so the fork is not av available yet. Uh, I talked to uh, the author of uh, of this tool, and he said they won't um, make it open source yet. So they are they are trying to add some interesting stuff because they have a very good result with it. So. Uh, not yet, but you can read how they uh, how they are uh, changed that. Well, the other thing is um, you can do additional input during the AFR is running. Uh, here you have a two interesting option. One is master slave mode. IFL allows you to run parallel uh, when one of the instance or instances are running in master, other are running in slave, and then uh, they are feed each other which makes uh, more reliable. The other thing is something called concolic execution. This is a new approach that you uh, connect, connect or use AFL in parallel with uh, symbolic execution engines. Um, so, so how it works? So we have uh, instances of AFL that are running, and then uh, we have a classic symbolic execution tools. Uh, maybe fjord, if you don't know what ex symbolic execution tools are, these are the tools that going through the application uh, and try to solve and fight all the possible paths by uh, constraint solving. Uh, they are very uh, time-consuming, resource-consuming, and they have few problems. That's why uh, they are not used itself to validate the application. But with the AFL, they have very good results. And right now, there are three public available. Uh, you can download it, test it. I've seen all of them. Uh, one is Munch, the second one is Driller, and the uh, last thing, which is quite new, is QSIM, and maybe a few words. So, uh, Munch is a platform that takes a CLI, which is a very popular symbolic execution tool, and just run it first. Whatever CLI you throw up, it goes through the AFL, then AFL fast from some time, and then it's going back to the CLI, and clean generate new test cases again. Very simple, very painful to, uh, to install. Uh, the second one is Driller. Uh, Driller is much more advanced. Uh, it uses not only AFL, but also ENG platform. And it works like this, that AFL is working, and when the AFL is saturated and it cannot find uh, anything more, then the ENG platform is running uh, with the AFL map. So then they try to find at least one path that haven't been found by AFL. When they find it, they feed it back to AFL, and AFL starts running uh, further. You can also go to web page uh, and download it and test it. The third one, very interesting tool that I've seen recently, uh, it's called QSIM. It's not exactly concolic execution because it doesn't use symbolic execution for a, uh, for a test case generation. It uses pin tool uh, and try to solve um, the constraint 
like loosely, so it's, it's guessing the constraint doesn't solve them, but this cause that it works much faster uh, than concolic execution. The other advantage is that you need to recompile the, your application again for a, for a concolic execution because for every symbolic tool, you need to compile it to immediately language instead of, uh, instead of a binary. Uh, there is a PDF also, it's, all, it's available on the GitHub, but if you go to the PDF, uh, there is a link where you can uh, download QSIM. Okay, next part that, uh, that is very important with uh, AFL is crash, crash detection. So AFL is looking for a crashes. If your application doesn't crash, AFL won't report that. It's, it's very simple. Uh, but sometimes it's not so easy. So when you have, for example, buffer overflows that don't cause a crash, uh, AFL won't report it. So we need to make it more crashable uh, than normally. We have few methods, of course. I just mentioned the most popular ones. Uh, one is a address sanitizer. is a tool used by a Clang compiler. It's at all the checks uh, for a memory read write, and if something's wrong, it just crash. So uh, the trick is, of course, there is always a trick. Uh, it works nice, but there is a huge overhead in memory and in speed of, of your application. And for 64 applications, it's not even recommended because uh, the, the application compiled with address sanitizer is really huge. The second one worth to mention is undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, so it's a tool that checks for um, everything that is in the, uh, in the C programming or C++ programming called as undefined behavior, right? It still can, uh, undefined behavior can work, can make no crashes, uh, but still can generate uh, mistakes uh, that can be found with the unbehave, uh, undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, the third thing that I found recently is a library called diffus. So it's alternative to memory sanitizer. Memory sanitizer is just part of address sanitizer that is used to see if uh, there is un, uh, unitionalized uh, memories on the stack. So the, the link uh, for the libdiffus, you can check it. Uh, I haven't, so I don't know how it works, but it seems pretty much. Okay, another step, if you have uh, all the stuff, we need to take our test, uh, test cases and we need to somehow mutate it, mutate them. How to do it? Well, uh, AFL has some uh, genetic algorithm implemented, some deterministic, some not deterministic. Uh, but what we want to do is to make the, these mutators uh, improved. How we can do it? Well, first thing is, is to use dictionaries. So IFL allows to use dictionary, which is a file uh, including the list of the values that we want uh, IFL to include every, um, uh, every test. Uh, how can we create this kind of dictionaries? Well, uh, by hand. Just type it whatever you want in, inside the uh, file. You can download it from the internet. There are dictionaries available, for example, for PDF files having all the keywords. Uh, you can just parse the source code, whatever you want. Uh, you can parse, for example, the applications uh, looking for strings and then add those strings uh, inside the dictionary. Or you can uh, do it during compilation uh, time. Uh, there is a nice plugin called IFL LLVM token cap pass, which is uh, used for uh, generating direct uh, dictionary. While application is compiling, it takes all the ifs, all the string compares and memory compares and dump everything to one file. Here is the link for it. Uh, and uh, you can test it if you want. The other thing that may help uh, the mutators working much better is not changing the mutators, but changing the application to make it easy for AFL. Uh, as you may know, AFL has some problems uh, with, uh, with some ifs. Uh, I think here is the end example, right? So the, uh, on the left, the first if, if you see uh, something like this. I didn't check this particular value, but I checked a different one. If you do this kind of if, AFL won't find it. Doesn't matter how long you will uh, you will run in it. Pure AFL downloaded from the uh, from the internet won't won't find this kind of code. There is no way. 
split compare pass uh, as a plugin for a clank uh, deal with this by changing one if to multiple ifs, uh, which is much better for, uh, for IFL to find uh, and go through. Uh, the second plugin is called compare transform pass, and it does the same, but with the string compares, right? It changes the string compares to multiple ifs, which are very easy to handle uh, by IFL. Uh, what else? You can also create your own mutators. Uh, this can help you, especially if you have your own application tested or your company uh, testing the application or you're a developer and you know exactly what kind of application you have, what kind of magic value you, uh, you are used, so you can do it your, uh, on your own. Uh, for AFL, there is a nice article about how to do it. Uh, here is the link. Uh, there is also a um, libfuzzer module that allows you to add uh, custom mutators to a libfuzzer uh, if you are interested. OK, so we have all of this, uh, but how about speeding up the application, right? Because even, even if you uh, make it uh, working faster for a 5 10%, if you're fuzzing on a larger scale, it gives you significant uh, um, difference, right? What you can do? Uh, you, can, uh, you can do distributed fuzzing, right? We, I already mentioned about there is this master-slave uh, mode, so how it works, so master's, master mode works in a uh, deterministic way, so you say how many masters you want to have it, what master is the number, and it split up all the uh, search area to those masters, so all the masters need to run, and then you have a slave uh, that works uh, undeterministic, random way, and all this together uh, give a uh, very good result. Uh, you can see about parallel fuzzing from, uh, from original IFL, what you can do to make it, uh, make it faster. So this was on one machine, but how you can distribute to different machines? Well. You can do it by, uh, by simple trick. So AFLs between every instance is synchronized based on the directory. So one of the tricks that you can use is, is just use the network share, right? Then you can have access to this uh, one directory uh, from many machines, and then you can build the cluster without adding any other stuff uh, for AFL. Uh, here are tools already designed for that. Uh, when they are doing this distributed uh, fuzzing between uh, different computers. What I, was, what I did in my previous job, we were, uh, we built a fuzzing farm based on the Android devices, and we use AFL and we synchronize the directory between the devices, so uh, each device had the same uh, directory, and on each device, you can, you can run uh, multiple IFL instances. So at the end, we end up with 96 uh, instances of IFL, which was divided by four, like 20 something uh, physical devices. Another technique that you can use is called uh, in memory fuzzing. One of the most consuming process where, while you are fuzzing is loading the application. You need to load it. And then the application just runs small test case, and then you need to uh, un unload it, right? Uh, so better is just to load everything you need, and before the functions that you want to test, you just fork it instead of running the whole, uh, the whole application, make it much faster. So IFL allows that. Uh, it's called IFL persistent mode. You just create a loop. Uh, here, is, uh, here is the loop. Right, you compile it, and here is the uh, the function that you want to test it. What IFL will do will run this uh, this while here. Uh, here is the fork mechanism, so it forks uh, one uh, one thousand times, and then it will uh, exit the application and run the application again. So we could uh, have much more uh, fa faster working application. Okay, one, uh, another thing that is very important is the feedback. Feedback is information going back from the application to AFL. 
how the application handle the test case. Normally, it's just information what kind of uh, coverage we have, what basic block uh, were executed, uh, what kind of path we went through. So every new test case, we can say, OK, this test case go through the same path that we already seen. It's pointless to test it, right? And we have a few options here. First option is uh, compile time instrumentation, the basic things that was uh, invented by uh, Alcamtuf was something called AFL GCC. It was a wrapper for GCC that adds uh, some assembly blocks, uh, assembly blobs on every uh, basic block. And based on each time the basic block was executed, this assembly block gets the information what, what, what I am. Thanks to this, AFL knows what kind of basic blocks um, were executed. Right now, AFL have a module to use the LLVM compile time instrumentation. I'm using this module because it's, uh, it's quite easy to add if you, if you are using Clang com uh, compilate, Compilator. Uh, yes. Uh, the other thing is uh, hardware tracing. Uh, there are two advantages over the compilation time. One is much faster. Uh, and the second thing, uh, the application doesn't need to be uh, compiled. This is very important. So we can take, uh, we can buy an application we want to test it. We don't have a source code. We can use uh, under hardware tracing and get uh, very good results. Uh, two most popular hardware tracing technology are uh, Intel PT, Intel Processor Trace, and uh, something called ARM uh, CoreSight. Uh, so what is Intel Processor Trace? It just uh, additional feature inside the processor that gives the information uh, what kind of execution, what kind of addresses uh, were executed. Um, the advantage of this is that uh, there is no overhead how the application is executed. It's done on the hardware. Uh, there are, I found two Windows, unfortunately, Windows AFL implementation that uh, can use that. PT Fuzzer, Win AFL, Intel PT Fuzzer, uh, that use this, uh, you, can, you can test it. Of course, you need to have appropriate uh, processor from Intel. Uh, don't remember what kind of version it starts. So. Uh, I have no slide about the ARM core side because I haven't found uh, any implementation for ARM uh, with the hardware tracing. Uh, I know that it's still very um, highly developed, so it's not finished yet. There is only one, Linu one version of Linux system on ARM that supports this ARM core site. It's much more complicated. It, it works in a much more complicated way than Intel processor tracing, and you need to decode all the trace, and that's why it's so, uh, so difficult to probably to implement or no one um, need it. Uh, the third thing you can do is just uh, use the execution time instrumentation. If you don't have a source code, you cannot recompile the application. You, you can just uh, use this. There are a few products available, uh, Dynamo Rio, PIN, QEMU, DIN East, and recently very interesting QEMU uh, TCG. They are the tools, frameworks, however you call it, that can inject the code while the application is executed. It's very high overhead, but uh, as I said, you don't need a source code, which makes uh, a very good for a, uh, for a testing. The last thing that uh, I would like to mention is uh, about different branches. So IFL become a very popular uh, tool. And right now, there is a lot of stuff going on around IFL. So it's not just simple IFL. There are different branches available uh, on the market. Whatever you want, you can just uh, look for it. I just mentioned a few. There is one for Android. There is one for JavaScript. There is one for network fuzzing. Uh, there is one even for uh, Python modules. So there are many, many different branches. Um, I didn't mention all of them uh, because there is no space here. Um, so uh, the trick is that before you start fuzzing and using the AFL and try to change it, just, just Google maybe someone already uh, wrote an uh, AFL uh, for that. Uh, so what next? I have nothing more to say, just uh, choose the target uh, and fuzz. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. I cannot provide you a microphone because I don't have it one. Still can hear you. Huh? Oh. Much so, um, you said that AFL was using uh, genetically determined uh, inputs for fuzzing the data. I was wondering whether it came with a preset of good inputs that fuzzed well, or if I start fuzzing, it will start seeing which ones were successful and start generating new data based on that. So, the original AFL has a uh, doesn't have an input. You provide the input, and they have something called mutators. So inside the code, you could see the mutators are, for example, 0, 1, minus 1, 255, 256, right? These are the mutators that are built in, uh, in IFR, right? Depends what, what kind of application you are testing and what kind of set you are providing. It will use those um, set of mutators and, uh, and try to fuzz your input. If you don't provide it any, it will try to build from, uh, from the stuff that, that they have, right? One of the, one of the examples is, is that I show you with this if and the long, uh, long value, right? There is not such kind of thing inside the IFL. It won't never find this kind of value, right? It needs to go through, iterate all the numbers, right? But there is no such thing. It just sometimes try to random numbers, but yeah, only for that. That's why the, the trick is to either provide very good inputs, Right, you can you can download all the spectra of of um, um, I would say like all the all the inputs that you are interested. Right, for example, if you want to test uh, PNG files, right, so you can create small, big one, color, uh, grayscale, this kind of compression, this kind of compression, this kind of compression. Right, this is good input. So IFL know all the stuff, can learn from this, can mutate those uh, files, and do the stuff. If you don't provide this. It still can try to do it, but it may, may not found it. I had the test when we are testing JPEG files. So I have a whole set of colorful uh, pictures, but none of them were in grayscale. And it never found it any that you can, you can go through the, uh, through the grayscale. So the, the, uh, the type of the file inside, the bytes that needs to be uh, inside to say, yeah, this is a grayscale, was too complicated for AFL, right? He never found it. When I provide just one, then it goes in cascade, right? And another question, if you had no idea about the inputs you are supposed to provide for your application, where would be a good start? So, uh, if you have a source code, you have a source code or no? Because this is, this is a crucial question. If you have a source code, you can go what I did uh, in my previous presentation. You can, there is a link you can see. I went with the symbolic execution. So symbolic execution can go through all the path and create your uh, inputs file, right? Even if you don't know what kind of input file, the, the symbolic execution tool will do that. There are, from, there are a few problems with, that, uh, with those kind of tools. They are very resource and time consuming. But for, uh, for a beginning, it's is very good. So you can, you can run it for two, three hours and get hundreds of, uh, of new, very good uh, test cases, right? The other thing is you can, you can, I don't know, for example, reverse it in IDA and dump all the constant that, that Ida found, right? And add as a dictionary. You can, uh, sorry, you can, you can do the same with the source code, right? You can go through all the ifs, all the compares, all the, I don't know, mem copies, whatever, all the constants, and again, add to dictionary and run again, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Marek. So, uh, if I remember correctly from memory, uh, AFL was originally designed for fuzzing file inputs, right? Yes. Um, is it good now, or is there a good fork for fuzzing uh, network inputs? And does it have to be on the same machine? So, I haven't uh, used it for a, uh, for a fuzzing network input. There is a branch. To do that, is it a fork or a yes, beans? yes, it's, it's, it's a fork of AFL with um, some um, 
add-ons that allows you to, to fast the network protocols, but uh, I haven't seen it. What about a different tool that would be like at the same level of goodness, like AFL, for networking? Uh, I don't know them. It's like the, the AFL is right now the, the state of the art, so all of, all of them try to do, do the fork. The, the, the trick is that uh, AFL uses this um, instrumentation, right? And this is the one of the, the important thing, crucial things in the fuzzing process right now, right? You get the feedback and you know which input is good, which input is, is no good. The different approach uh, you can find is a fuzzer called Hongfuzz. I don't know if you heard. So it's also written by, uh, by one of the guys of the Google. So it uses um, system perfs. So you can, uh, you can define what kind of perfs you are using from the system, like how many branches you are executing or how many missed branches you are executing. And this kind of stuff is used for a feedback. But uh, I don't know any father that uh, does the same as uh, AFL. And it's not AFL branch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have a next question here. Anyone else after? So this will be the last question. Hello, great presentation. The question, the, my question is, uh, so if you, you serve AFL a certain file that has a certain format, can you specify it somehow, okay, AFL, please mutate, mutate this, but ignore this part, for example, ignore the parts that indicate that this is going to be a certain header that need, need, needs to be there? So uh, right now, no, but IFL can learn that. So uh, IFL doing the process of, of mutating can learn that, for example, this part of the code is not worth to mutate anymore. And this part of the code, it is. So then you can, uh, there, is, there is a tool for IFL, IFL map or something similar that shows you that, yeah, this, this piece of the file is something responsible for, for a length or something. This is for this, this is for this. So IFL somehow learned that, but there is, I don't know the way that you can, uh, you can say that don't fast this piece of the part of the file. No, I don't, uh, I don't know that. Okay, so one other question, if I may. Sure. Uh, if you had any experience with libfuzzer, can you compare their mutation engines? Which one is better and why? Are they similar? So there is, they are working in different ways, right? Classic AFL works each time it runs the application, go through everything and uh, an exit from the application, right? Libfuzzer is just running the same function many times, right? Um, it's, it's very difficult to compare that. Because sometimes it's happened that, uh, for example, if you fuzz, um, if you fuzz a function that inside use some kind of resources, right? And there is a bug that the resources are not back to the system, and you fuzz it one one thousand times. So at some point it will crash, but you will never get this inside the inside the application because each time the application exits, system automatically release those resources, right? So these are the the problems that are not uh, you cannot compare, right? So. Everything depends what kind of function. It, it, there is no one answer, this is better, this is worse. Everything depends what, what you want to fast, right? The question is also if it's better to fast uh, PDFs or images, right? AFL it may be not very good with PDFs. It's much better with the image files. The same is here. Libfuzzer is for one thing, and AFL is for, for the second thing, right? Or you, you should use both. The best solution is use both and feed them each other. If, if it's possible, right? Uh, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you, you just uh, fast the part of the file which you feed the, the function. But if they are the same, use both. Like there is, there is no problem to use three or four fuzzers. No one said you cannot do it. You can, you can run different fuzzers and feed IFL with the, with the inputs. There is no, no problem with that. Just whatever you have, you, you can run it, right? So this was Marek Smizwoski from Saisura. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.